Welcome, spiritual family, to AFG Ministry, a faithful God ministry. I am Alicia, pastor and founder here, and I am extremely excited that you are here with me today. This is indeed a blessing. Like our welcome video said, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, I know that God will meet you here today. Amen. I'm excited about our spiritual tea today. I'm going to spill all the spiritual tea about transferring from being disruptively broken to gracefully broken. I want to start with a prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to bless the church in this place. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the doubting find faith and the content be awakened. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful find comfort. Here may the believer be encouraged and the lost find salvation. Forgive our sins and cleanse our hearts. Inhabit our praises as we worship and speak to us through your word, all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today I'll be referring to the book of Jonah, as well as Romans chapter 5, verse 2 through 4, and James chapter 1. While you find and tag the different scriptures, a couple of key items. Number one, as I go through the sermon, you will see slides with key bullet points to make taking note and journaling easier for you. Bible journaling and receiving the word is so comforting, correct? And number two, let's take a moment to reflect on our past week and give God praise and worship because no matter how hard the test was, we made it. Some of you experienced the toughest week, but if you take a moment to reflect somewhere along your path, God did carry you. Remember, tests turn into testimony and the mess in your hot mess turns into a message. Praise Him, He is good, amen. There was a story. A man one day was walking along a California beach and he was deep in prayer. And all of a sudden, he said out loud, God, grab me one wish. Just then, the sunny sky clouded right above his head. And in a booming voice, God said, because you have tried to be faithful to me, and always, I will grant you this one wish. The man said, build, build a bridge to Hawaii so I can go, so I can drive over there anytime that I want. God replied, your request is very materialistic. Let's think about all the challenges and undertaking it will take for that one request. Think of the, the infrastructure required to reach the bottom of the ocean. The thousands of miles of, of concrete and steel that will be needed. I can do it because I am God. But I can't say that I can justify your desire for something so worldly and materialistic. Take a moment to think of another request, something that will honor and glorify me. The man thought for a moment and he said, he finally said, God, I wish that I could understand women. I want to know how they feel, what they think, 
What makes them truly happy? God quickly replied, and he asked the man, so do you want two or four lanes on that bridge? <laughs> um, okay, let's start with our, our financial term. Disruptive investing. Disruptive investing occurs when firms invest in, in a startup company at, their, at the beginning stages. Startup companies that radically configure a particular field in business by implementing new technologies or reconfiguring a more competitive business approach or model. Examples of companies are Netflix or Amazon. Initially, the investors will invest a small amount with expectations of extraordinary returns. This makes it where it's a less risk for the investors, but with good returns. Okay? Spiritually, we are disruptively broken. When the unfortunate events arrive, in our lives, when they become present, we radically reconfigure our thoughts with the same level of thinking that created the unfortunate events, causing us to become disruptively broken. When we are disruptively broken, God, God invests, He invests a small amount For extraordinary returns. He essentially gifts us his grace and he's transferring us from being disruptively broken to gracefully broken. And when this happens, we need to receive, claim, and appreciate. Let's put this in our wise spiritual lens. Have you ever been hurt to the point of brokenness? People or situations have caused a series of revolving hurt, leaving our heart, our soul, and our mind just in complete shambles. And it comes a moment where you ask yourself, over and over how did I get here or how do I begin to move forward before my journey when this would happen to me my first reactions would be to regress to regress back to my childhood mechanism, <laughs> to my childhood me mechanism of shutting down and shutting out. I was disruptively broken. And the same brokenness filtered into my external being. My spiritual brokenness, it modeled, it modeled my my physical and mental life. I read an article that said negative thoughts, negative thoughts shine the light on your unconscious mind, causing the enemy to create a new reality for your life. When we are disruptively broken, God gives a, a small amount of his grace and to the center of all our pieces. He knows, he knows when we are disruptively broken. See, because God, God can't use us. He can't use us until we are broken. 
James writes in the book of James, James writes a letter that our faith, our faith will be tested with many troubles. However, these tests, these tests, they produce strength. And strength, strength, strength builds character. And character, character builds hope. See, when the, when the final piece, when the final piece of us breaks, this is the moment where we need to remember God. We need to remember God and the small investment he made into our spiritual portfolio. He uses, he uses tests to bring us closer to him. For him to, to give more substantial amounts of his grace into our portfolio to begin repairing and restoring. See, once we seek God, we become under spiritual construction and restoration. And see, during that time, during this phase, during the construction, the under construction and restoration phase, God is performing spiritual works. He's transferring us from being disruptively broken to being gracefully broken. Correct? Gracefully broken. Let's talk about gracefully broken. Gracefully broken is when we receive, claim, and appreciate. Although we are broken, God is gifting us. He's gifting us His grace. We don't need to earn it. We don't even need to ask for it. It is given to us freely. See, God extends his hand of grace for us to receive it with our hand of faith in order to accept it. And by us accepting it, we're accepting God's promises in our lives. By us receiving and claiming his grace, we are claiming our inheritance and every inch of our lives holds significant value and meaning. We are worthy. We are worthy and deserving of his gift of grace. We just need to receive, claim, and appreciate. Let's talk about Jonah. The book of Jonah shows that God is a merciful and gracious God. See, God called upon Jonah the prophet to go speak his word, God's words. To Nevia. Nevia. <laughs> See, Nevia, Nevia was a wicked city. And dangerous enemies to the city of Israel. And out of, out of love for Israel, Jonah didn't want to go. He didn't want to speak to him. Jonah initially disobeyed God's command and he fled. He fled in the whole opposite direction because he wanted he wanted that city the people in that city to suffer he wanted God to punish them however God already knew God already knew Jonah's blueprint he already knew that Jonah would disobey him and flee when Jonah fled, he aborted a ship. And while on a ship in the middle of the ocean, going in the whole opposite direction, God caused a catastrophic storm to occur. And the storm was so forceful 
Reluctantly, the ship crew had to throw them off overboard. They just threw them overboard in the middle of the ocean. But once they threw him overboard, the storm immediately ceased. But, but then, just then, a whale, a whale came and swallowed Jonah whole. Jonah was in the pit of the belly of the whale, literally praying to God for mercy and grace for three days straight. He was in so much despair and disruptively broken that he wanted to die. He wanted to die. After three days, the well, the well came and he spit Jonah out right outside the city of Nevea. Just then, God told Jonah again, go into the city and speak my word. See, our God, our God does not give up on us because we become disobedient. This time, Jonah listened. He went into the city and he told all the people there in the city that if they do not repent, if they do not become righteous within 40 days, they will all be destroyed. The king and the people in the city actually listened. They listened to him and believed his warning and they believed his warning was the word of God and it came from God. So they began to clean, purge and purify. By them, <clears throat> by them doing this, this made Jonah even more angrier. This made Jonah even more resentful. He didn't want them to believe him. He wanted them to not listen to him so that way God will punish them and they will suffer. He begged God, Jonah begged God again to take his life. Jonah went and he set up shop out of the, outside of the city, on the east side of the city. He built a hut and he sat there by that hut waiting to see what will become of the city. What will God actually do? And one day while he was sitting there, a plant with thick leaves began to grow to provide shade and to deliver Jonah from his grief. However, the next morning, a giant worm, a giant worm came and destroyed the plant. And then a hot wind blew and Jonah suffered. He suffered from the heat and he fainted. And again, Jonah wished that he had died. He began to show resentment and anger to God. Finally, God asked him, he asked him, is it right? Is it right for you to be angry about a plant? Jonah responded and said, it is, it is. And I am so angry, I wish I was dead. But then God said, you have been concerned about this plant 
though you did not tend to it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and it died overnight. And I, God, should not have concern for the great city of Nevia in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left hand and also many children and animals. What was the lesson learned? God, God has miraculous power and supremacy over his entire creation. And see, the unfortunate events Jonah experienced was by the grace of God. When we are rooted, when we are rooted in despair, deep in the pit of the belly of the beast, being selfish to our own wants and needs and desires, being disruptively broken, See, that's when God will extend his hand of grace for us to receive it by our hand of faith. See, all we need to do, all we need to do is receive, claim, and appreciate. There was once a man who was shipwrecked and stranded on an island. Every day he prayed, asking God to send someone to rescue him. But to his dis disappointment, no one ever came. Months passed and this man, he learned how to survive on the island. He accumulated things from the island and stored them in the hut that he built with his own hands and from materials on the island. And one day after hunting for food and returning back to his hut, much to his dismay, he saw that his hut was on fire along with everything else he owned. All of his possessions were going up in smoke. The only thing he had left was the clothes on his back. Initially, he was shocked. And then he was consumed. He was consumed with so much anger and rage. And in his fury, he threw up his fist into the air and began cursing God. And he was yelling, God, how could you let this happen to me? I've been praying every day for months about being rescued. And no one, no one has come. And now everything, everything that I have is on fire. How could you do this to me? Why did you let this happen? Later, the man was on his hands and knees, weeping heavily. When he happened to look up and catch sight of a ship coming in his direction, the man was rescued. He was rescued. And as they were, were heading back to civilization, the man asked the captain, how were you able to find me? The captain responded, we were voyaging across the ocean when we noticed on the horizon a column of smoke going up. We decided to go check it out. And when we did, that's where we found you. Again, our faith will be tested with many troubles. But, but these tests will produce strength. And strength builds character. And character builds hope. 
God is hope. Our action items for the week are first and foremost, give praise. Then we need to receive, claim, and appreciate God's grace into our lives. He is freely gifting us His grace. And all we have to do is claim it in His name for Him to begin the spiritual works by transferring us from being disruptively broken to gracefully broken. We need to move to zone four, our learning zone, to position ourselves to receive His grace and mercy to receive His miraculous powers and blessings in every inch of our lives and anything or anyone who touches it. Our finances, our businesses, our family, our household, our career, our journey. Amen? My quote for this week is by Albert Einstein. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Fun spiritual fact. The word grace. The word grace appears 159 times in the Bible. Thank you for joining me today. It was truly a blessing and I look forward to seeing you the next time. Again, you will receive absolute blessings this week because you have God's unconditional love. Yes, He will carry you through anything. Before I close with a prayer, I ask that you visit AFG Ministry, a Faithful God Ministries website, and visit our prayer room and submit your prayer requests. The power of prayer is so forceful and intense, and we want to pray over you. I want to close reading Numbers chapter 6 verse 24 through 26 as my closing prayer many blessings may the Lord bless you and protect you may the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you may the Lord show you his favor and give you peace in his name amen <laughs>